viewers welcome back to free engineering tutorial on operating system so in this video we are going to discuss about virtual file systems after that we will discuss different directory implementations in operating system so starting with virtual file systems so as we had discussed in different videos in previous videos uh, we had discussed that uh, to uh, recognize each and every file system our operating system has to store code to recognize any uh, file system okay so if we are storing each and fi every file system's code in our operating system then it will be too huge or too bulky operating system okay so to uh, extract or to remove this disadvantage of any operating system we are implementing virtual file systems so virtual file system consists of basically three layers okay so in the first layer which is file system interface we are just opening our file okay so all the operations like opening closing and uh, read and write uh, functions which we are having in any file so we will implement those functions in our first layer which is file system interface okay after this uh, after this if any code is applying or introducing open or close functions it is being introduced here in the file system interface after that the second layer is vfs interface what it will do let's see here so in the uh, second layer the virtual file system layer sorry so it separates file system generic operation from their implementation by defining a clean vfs interface so what it will do it will separate the things okay firstly there are some implementations okay and there are some other functions which are not implementations of any file okay so these are unique attributes of any file okay so it will be separated by vfs interface okay after that what it will do it will provide a mechanism for uniquely representing a file throughout the a network okay so from here we will separate any file system in the terms of let's say if a file is in the system then it will be local file system and if a file is coming from any remote device it will be remote file system okay so as we can see here local file system type 1 and type 2 okay these two files are coming from our local file system but this type 1 remote file system is coming from any remote device let's say it is coming from uh, ftp or it is coming from dfs okay so depending on that uh, vfs interface will separate the files and recognize the files in the operating system now as you can see that the four main object types defined by the linux vfs okay so here we will discuss majorly linux vfs what it will store it will store the inode object okay so an inode number is given to each and every file okay and uh, it is unique okay after that we will store file object which uh, represents an open file okay so all the files which are only open those files will uh, means consist of a file object it will be stored in vfs after that we have super block object which represents an entire file system and d entry object which represents an individual directory entry okay so these are some useful information for any vfs to recognize that file system okay so we are having information about its directory about its file system and about the file and inode object okay after that for each of these four uh, object attributes the vfs defines a set of operations so what are the operations so for any operation we will call uh, we are calling an api okay and in api we have to give certain parameters so those parameters can be what are those parameters these are open okay if we want to open a file if we want to read a file then we will call ss size t underscore t and then we will call read function okay so if this function can be called as a parameter in api after that s size t write means if we want to write in a file then we are calling this parameter in the api after that if we want to have a memory map of a file 
then we'll uh, give the parameter as m map to the api and we are getting the uh, attributes which we are asking for okay after that coming to, to the directory implementation so directory implementation is just like full file systems we are having in this semester only so just like a file system structure we are having uh, all the directory implementations so one is linear list if we uh, means uh, is storing all the directories in the form of linear fashion okay so as you can say that uh, it is time consuming okay because it is going line by line okay linearly uh, firstly it will access first record then second record then third record so it is a f uh, it is in the form of linear fashion after that if we want to add any file or and add any content will add at the end of directory what it is called it is called appending okay and uh, before any adding or deleting should be uh, should be done firstly we have to make sure that the file is open okay and there should be no other file with that name and if we want to delete a file so firstly we have to search for it and after we are searching and the searching is successful let's say so uh, in, on the place of the searched element we have to insert any kind of character uh, so, so that we can get to know that this location is erased okay and marking the entry as unused by any special name okay so let's say we are giving a tomb stone to that content okay so on that location if we are giving a, a hash sign it means that the location's content is being deleted and can attach it to a list of free directory so uh, this free directory entries we will discuss at the end of the module and uh, in the next video and attach a used unused bit to each entry okay so in these ways deletion can be done after that we are having some drawbacks of linear list okay what are the drawbacks or disadvantages uh, it is time consuming process as you can get to know okay after uh, having full operating system idea you can get to know that if we are using any linear fashion algorithm then it will take time at the time of searching okay and if we are using any sorting technique means binary searching and so for binary searching we have to use sorting okay it will take its own complexity time complexity and space complexity okay so for that we are using b tree okay in b tree the searching will take less time okay so in the next slide we are using hash table okay so hash table is completely related to file system structure okay it is the concept of file structures and if we are introducing that structure uh, file structure in our operating system so what it will do is that it will hash means uh, uh, what the data we want to store in the disk we are using a hash function and converting the data into a hashed digest okay and this di according to this digest we are storing the full data onto the index of that hash uh, hash digest okay so what are the difficulties of this hash function so firstly we have to uh, we will get the digest as a fixed size length okay so we are having a fixed size digest after that it has to dependent on hash function of that size okay so if we are having a very large number of data means la very large data then we have to use any other hash function or if we have any smaller data then we have to use a smaller hash function okay so hash function will be a point to consider after that if we are having uh, let's say two keys and uh, we are having one same location to store okay uh, there are some strings which will uh, on the means uh, we uh, what we can say if we are applying the hash function on both the strings we will get a same output okay so these strings these type of strings are called synonyms okay and if we are getting synonyms greater in greater number at a, or in any document then we will have a collision uh, drawback okay we will get a disadvantage of collisions to, to avoid collisions we have to use different type of techniques so there are different techniques like uh, linear probing and uh, separate chaining and bucket so these are the different techniques which we are using to avoid collisions 
okay so one among those is chained overflow okay so in chained overflow what we are doing is that we are uh, formally making a chains okay for different uh, keys which are belong to same home uh, address okay so for different synonyms we are having chain of those address after each hash entry can be linked uh, so each hash entry can be a linked list instead of an individual uh, value so let's say a uh, uh, string is having one address as like 1001 okay so 1001 and any string 2 is also having the home address of 1001 so what we will do is that we will store that string in the next link of this 1001 okay and we will give the pointer here for this address let's say this is the 1100 okay so we will give the pointer as 1100 okay and in this way chaining is being followed so after that we have some allocation methods so we have continuous allocation methods in which we are storing all the contents in continuous manner okay so this uh, allocation technique will take uh, the least seek time okay because in one flow of a disk or in one flow of a header we are getting all the contents because they are being stored in the continuous manner as you can see that these are being stored in uh, like 0 1 2 okay in this diagram uh, 0 1 2 so these are being stored in continuous manner after that these are being stored at 6 7 then they are being stored at 14 15 16 17 18. so these are continuous strings which are being stored in disk okay and if we want to access these storages contents from this storage device then we will uh, rotate the disk in one go and we'll get all the contents so as you can see that it will take less seek time okay but it is having its own uh, disadvantage like it will uh, suffer from external fragmentation okay we are having the uh, what we can say we are having the space sufficient space for any incoming file but we are not having sufficient space in continuous manner so the incoming file cannot be stored so this problem is called external fragmentation we had already discussed in previous videos so uh, this is a problem in continuous allocation for these problem we need to deploy dynamic storage allocation techniques okay so for uh, because of these problems we are storing the uh, files dynamically okay and uh, in linked allocation what we are doing is that uh, you can see in this diagram and get understand that uh, firstly we will store one content at the head after that we will give the next contents file uh, address location in this block only okay so uh, let's say it is starting from 9 okay so from 9 if the another content is stored at uh, let's say position 13 okay so it will direct to the 13th location after that it will direct to the 16 so as you can see that the different contents are being stored on different locations and the pointer is being given at the previous location okay previous block so the previous block will tell us that where the next content uh, content is being stored so as you can see that uh, it is uh, storing different pointers for different blocks so it will uh, take an extra amount of memory for just allocation part which is not uh, really a data okay so you can see that if a pointer requires four bytes of a out of 512 byte block then it will take 0.78% in uh, pointer only okay it will store 0.78% of my memory in the form of pointers which is not really a data it is just used for determining the where the data is stored it is not the actual data so we need to Uh, means uh, make it less okay it we need to uh, decrease this 0.78% amount of memory to uh, to be more less than 0.78 okay so for that reason we are using clusters okay and in clusters all the file uh, means majority of file structures are being stored in neighbors only okay so after that we are using indexed allocation okay in indexed allocation we are using the index means pointers of all the contents in 
वन ब्लॉक ओनली ओके सो लेट से दिस नाइनटीन ब्लॉक विल कंटेन ऑल द एड्रेस कंटेंट्स मीन्स ऑल द एड्रेस ऑफ फाइल कंटेंट्स इन द शॉर्ट एंड मैनर सो नाइन सिक्सटीन वन टेन एज एज दे आर इन द फाइल मीन्स मेन फाइल सो एज यू कैन सी दैट दीज आर द फाइल कंटेंट्स ओनली नो so because of these continuous file contents we are storing all the file contents address in one ad, uh, index file okay so this index file is stored in this 19th block and from here we are accessing different contents so as you can say see that if we are using indexed allocation then we have to keep account of if there is very large file okay so we have to store very large number of indexes also okay and it will be quite bulky also if we are having millions of records so for that we are using linked scheme multi level index and combined scheme so what we are doing in unix uh, i note we are using firstly uh, first uh, address will be mode then we are having owners time stamps size block count then we are having memory for Uh, the address which which are having really data okay so these are the file contents means uh, this is the area where we are actually saving the data okay where we are actually storing the data after that the first single indirect block it will store the address of these blocks okay these direct blocks after that in the double indirect block it will store the address of these single indirect blocks what it will do it will be the second uh, secondary level of indexing okay it will be the index of index file okay after that we are having triple indirect also so in the, uh, that manner you can see that uh, the single indirect will store the address of the uh, store the address of the data where may means address of the address where the, the actual data is stored after that double indirect will store the index of the index of the data okay so this is quite <laughs> Uh, this is quite difficult to uh, means teach but uh, you can get and uh, get to understand if you are reading this okay so in next video we are going to talk about performance and uh, this will be the last video of the uh, module 4 okay till then thank you